Coming up on Mountain News at 530, another group of hostages are released, but will the ceasefire in the Middle East be extended again? Plus, Long Island Congressman George Santos could be voted out of Congress this week. Plus, we are dry this evening, but showers are on the way later this week. Your forecast coming up as Mountain News at 530 starts right now. Dedicated to Southern and Eastern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 530. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. CBS News has learned a U.S. citizen is expected to be among the hostages Hamas releases today. Israel is also releasing an additional 30 Palestinian prisoners. The extended ceasefire is set to expire after this most recent exchange, although intense negotiations are underway to continue the truce even longer, which would also enable more humanitarian aid to flow into Gaza. CBS's Natalie Brand reports from Capitol Hill, where families of some hostages are speaking to U.S. lawmakers. Hamas released more hostages Wednesday on the sixth day of a temporary ceasefire. The fate of Israel's youngest hostage, a 10-month-old baby and his four-year-old brother and mother, remains uncertain. The Israeli military said Wednesday that it's examining the reliability of a Hamas claim that Shira Bibas and her sons had been killed in Israeli airstrikes. CBS News could not independently verify that claim. Israeli official Benny Gantz said he spoke with the Bibas family today. He called the report painful. Relatives of hostages met with lawmakers on Capitol Hill calling for the release of all hostages. Israel believes around 150 remain in captivity. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said he will push for the temporary ceasefire to be extended during his trip this week to Israel. It's also enabled us to, uh, to surge humanitarian assistance into the people of Gaza who so desperately need it. In Gaza, residents lined up for supplies at a U.N. distribution center. Health officials warn of dire outcomes facing the millions of Palestinian civilians living in the war-ravaged territory. Eventually, we will see more people die from disease than we are even seeing from the bombardment if we are not able to put back this health system. The White House says more than 2,000 trucks of aid have made it into Gaza since October 21st. But U.N. health officials say the surge in aid is still not nearly as much as needed. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Israel's Prime Minister said Wednesday that Israel unequivocally plans to resume the war when the truce ends. The highest ranking Jewish elected official in American history is condemning anti-Semitism. Majority Leader Chuck Schumer was on the Senate floor today to decry the rise of hate crimes against Jewish people. In a rare sign of bipartisan support, Republican Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell went out of his way to praise his Democratic colleagues' emotional address. I feel compelled to speak because I'm the highest ranking Jewish elected official in America. In fact, the highest ranking Jewish elected official ever. To Amen. us, the Jewish people, the rise of anti-Semitism is a crisis, a five alarm fire that must be extinguished. Schumer says anti-Semitism has been increasing since Hamas attacked Israel on October 7th. Well, the forecast is not too bad for late November standards. Here's a live look from the WYMT studios, and you can see we are dry this evening under a clear sky. That temperature also a little bit cooler right now, down to 46 degrees, and most of us in the upper 40s and lower 50s on this Wednesday evening, and down to 49 for Harlan, also London, 51 for Manchester, and 47 for Prestonsburg, also Pikeville at this hour. But like we promised, we are much warmer on Wednesday compared to Tuesday. Most of us right now between 15 up to 20 degrees warmer on your Wednesday. We get even warmer though by Thursday, Friday and into this weekend, all thanks to that area of high pressure that continues to sit over the eastern coast. Up on first alert pinpoint Doppler, once again we are dry this evening under a clear sky and more dry weather is on the way into tonight. Also on Thursday, 
but we are watching out for those changes as we end the work week on Friday. But into tonight, once again, we are dry. Those clouds do increase as that next weather system is not too far away, and those overnight lows are cool, but not as cold as Monday or Tuesday nights. We're back in the middle to lower 30s as you wake up on Thursday. Steve. All right, Cameron, thanks. Former President Jimmy Carter was able to attend the private funeral services for his wife today. The service for former First Lady Rosalind Carter was held at the couple's small Baptist church in Plains, Georgia. The service included tributes from Mrs. Carter's sons, Jack and Jeff, along with scripture readings by three of her great-grandchildren. Jimmy Carter, who is 99 and receiving hospice care at home, was also able to attend yesterday's larger memorial service in Atlanta. I am so excited today that you stopped by and came here to celebrate the life and legacy of the greatest first lady ever. Not just first lady of a White House, but first lady of a global nation where she served every nation around the world. Rosalind Carter was 96 years old. Representative George Santos's time in Congress may be coming to an end if New York Republicans have their way. GOP House leaders say they will let their members vote their conscience as a move to expel Santos from Congress is gaining momentum. CBS's Bradley Blackburn has more from New York. House leaders say a vote to expel Congressman George Santos could come Thursday or Friday. And even Santos himself thinks well, this could be the end. I believe my colleagues, and a lot of them are saying that they have the votes. So, so you think the writing is on the wall? Could be, yeah. yeah. This would be the second time Santos has faced an expulsion vote, and momentum is moving against him. How will you be voting? I'll be voting to expel Santos. He's a crook. At least a dozen lawmakers have said they changed their minds and will join those voting to expel Santos. The move comes after the House Ethics Committee alleged the Long Island Republican deceived donors and used campaign funds to buy Botox, designer clothing, and take trips to the Hamptons and Atlantic City. This is different. I mean, this is very expensive. This is fraud. He refused to cooperate with the committee, which is our self-policing thing, and I think it's a pretty straightforward case. Santos's removal would trigger a special election within 90 days, and with tight margins in the House, losing the seat could make it harder for Republicans to pass legislation. But New York Republicans say they're confident they can replace him with another Republican, and they're the ones pushing for the vote. He shouldn't be a member of Congress. We were the first to call for his resignation. We were the first to support his expulsion. Um, Santos is, is not part of the, of, the, of the party. It takes a two-thirds vote in the House to approve the resolution and expel Santos from Congress. Bradley Blackburn, CBS News, New York. Only five House members have ever been expelled from Congress, and most of those occurred during the Civil War. Former President Donald Trump posted on True Social today that replacing Obamacare is still a top priority for him. Last weekend, Trump said Republicans should not give up on trying to repeal Obamacare while looking for other alternatives. Trump said, quote, getting much better health care than Obamacare for the American people will be a priority of the Trump administration. General Motors says it will cut spending on self-driving vehicles after one struck a pedestrian earlier this year. Chief Executive Mary Barra says development of cruise cars will be more deliberate going forward. She says the company will spend less on them next year. Production of GM's Origin vans is suspended. Those vehicles have no driver's seat, steering wheel, or pedals. Forbes says AI, artificial intelligence, is on track to become a $407 billion industry by 2027. With such rapid growth, senators are working to try and protect Americans. This week, they introduced the Artificial Intelligence Research, Innovation, and Accountability Act. Senator John Thune says it aims to encourage innovation while also bringing transparency. While AI has the potential to revolutionize healthcare, agriculture, logistics, and supply chains, dangers still lurk. You look at even deep fakes. Uh, you can now you can AI is able to mimic somebody's sound, their their voice, their appearance, and uh, if um, if you're interacting with uh, content that's being generated by artificial intelligence instead of a human source. 
uh, we just think it's important for people to know that. The bill puts the onus on large internet platforms to notify their users. Enforcement of the rule will be carried out by the Department of Commerce. So far, the bill has bipartisan support. One federal agency is looking to find a solution to America's housing shortage. We'll hear from the agency's chairwoman about the push to create affordable housing and have information on what renters need to know. Plus, we are chilly tonight, but some 60s could be on the way by this weekend. Those details after this break.